Psalms 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteousness. For the Lord knows the way of the righteousness, but the way of the wicked will perish. And Tony, what would you say is your favourite uh, quote or your favourite story? Yeah, I mean, there are many. And, and as you know, George wrote prolifically. And so we have a lot of his thought. But for, for me, I, I think the secret um, of his longevity, of, 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 of his, his enduring life, really, is his relationship with God. Um, and it seems to be sort of quite late in his life, uh, not late, comparatively late, but well as a mature man, as a minister, he discovered that the, the key business or, or purpose of every day was to, to have his soul delighted in God. And uh, he realized that he'd been, he'd been beginning every day laboring in prayer and, and, and sometimes it was hard work, but, but he then began to realize that if he would just allow God to delight his soul, um, we might say, be filled with the spirit, be filled with joy, then it transformed everything. Let, let me just read just a, a, a very brief thing. Um, I saw more clearly than ever that the first great and primary business to which I ought to attend every day was to have my soul happy in the Lord. And it, the first thing to be concerned about was not how I might serve the Lord, how I might glorify the Lord, how I might get my, but how I might, get my soul into a happy state mm -hmm. because from there he discovered that his spirit was right his attitude was right and from there he discovered that he could pray earnestly for long periods of times and his faith was enlarged and he could ask God uh, and he realized that uh, to be delighted in the Lord as, as it tells us in the Psalms delight yourselves in the Lord and he will give you the desires mm -hmm. of your heart to me I of all the things, I, I can relate the most to that um, mm. because I know in my own time with God, that's been very instrumental and very, very helpful. And I would encourage all of us to, to, to feast on God first, even before the petitions, even before the requests. Like Jesus said in, in the Lord's Prayer, didn't he? Our Father uh, who art in heaven. So there was adoration, there, there was relationship, hallowed be your name. Mm. Um, that's influenced me, I believe, probably as much, if not more, than anything else in, in mm -hmm. his life. And his biography, one of his earliest, well, the one, I think, the mo one of the most popular ones is called Delighted in God, isn't it? And um, there's a secret there mm -hmm. that, that keeps you going day after day, year after year. Tony, um, uh, if you could say succinctly, um, how would you say he actually did delight himself in God? Yeah. Well, I got a little clip of, of a talk you did quite recently on Psalm 1 um, about meditating mm. in the law, in the word of God day and night. And, and, and that's what he did. He, he, would, he would go to the word of God and, and, and he would read it meditatively and slowly and, and let it feed his soul. Mm. Uh, and... Um, that was the means of, of his delight by um, taking time, if you will, uh, over the word of God, reading it slowly, let, praying it, let it, let it, letting it feeding his, his being. And he found that as he did that, as he meditated on the word of God, um, it, 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 it strengthened him and, and filled him with joy. Mm. So that was, that was the key. Yeah. Um, it was his respect, if you like, of God's word as as um, the means by which he was sustained and and, and given light. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in his law, uh, as the psalmist wrote, I will meditate day and night. Mm -hmm. and, and truly, 
he was and became a tree, wasn't he? Like planted by the rivers of water that brought forth its fruit in its season and his leaf didn't wither. And um, mm. I think that you'd say that about George Muller, that his, weed, his leaf didn't wither, even to the, the end of his life. He was, mm. um, you know, just before he died, he was preparing to preach. Mm. Uh, he, he never kind of lost that passion and joy because he, he delighted in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditated day and night. Um, it's been fantastic um, having uh, Tony uh, with us. We really appreciate you, Tony. Uh, thank you so much. We're really looking forward to having you on Thursday, a second time at our Bible study. Um, I realize that time is getting on, so I'm going to make uh, my conclusion um, very short. Um, so I think we'll jump straight to slide five, Phil. Um, just to remind you guys about um, this cow, which is an amazing picture of meditation. You know, we use this word ruminating. And um, you'll remember that the cow has how many stomachs? Four sections of its stomach. And the big red one that you saw was the rumen. So I just want to really emphasize the process, how this is different to reading the Bible and Bible meditation. Charles Spurgeon said that the memory is like the ark in which the manna is laid up, but meditation is like Israel's eating of the manna. So it's like um, that the, the manna that was put in the box, that you have to get it out and eat it. And it's in the eating, uh, the meditating, the enjoying of God's word, that the life really comes. So this this old cow, um, it chews and swallows the grass, uh, which is the first process. Then it goes down into that big red area, the rumen, uh, where it's partially digested and turned into what we call cud. Um, and uh, then it goes into this thing called the reticulum, um, where it's made into small lumps and sent back into the mouth. Doesn't sound very nice, does it? But this is why a cow is always chewing. Its teeth are made to chew, 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 because they're breaking that grass down, that cud, that chewing the cud into smaller pieces. And then it goes back down into the omasum, um, and then it's broken down to even smaller pieces, and finally into the abomasum, which is the proper stomach. And that's where our food normally starts, just goes from mouth to stomach and is processed. But the cows go through this whole ruminating process. And meditation on the scriptures is like that. Joe and I sat down yesterday morning and I said to Joe, you know, when you're, you're meditating on the scripture, when you are meditating on that verse, what are the processes? What is it like? What are the things that happen? The first thing, of course, is that you read the Bible. Well, Jo, if you remember, was walking down Tufnell Park Road. So she wasn't reading the Bible. She was remembering it. This is the beauty of memorizing scripture. And I would really encourage you, when you find a good verse, write it down remember it, memorize it, and then it becomes like a treasury store that you can you can um, uh, call on. Or if you've got your phone with you, you can read it as you go along. Nobody wonders uh, anymore. Even if you're praying aloud, they think you're talking to somebody on the phone. So you read, you remember, and then pause. And just say, God, you know, like David prayed, open my eyes that I may behold wonderful things out of your law, out of your teaching. And so we start to pray, Lord, thank you. Thank you, God, that you are the one who made the world and everything in it. And then you start to look around and you see the sky and the birds flying in the sky. You see the, the, the bumblebee that's fallen down, that's crawling along the ground. Uh, you, you smell the fresh air and the wonder of creation. And you think, wow, you created all this, God. You are amazing. You are so big. You are so meticulous. You made the tiniest thing and the biggest thing, and you hold it all together. This is meditating. This is ruminating on God's word. You start to thank him for all that he's given us in creation, the air that we breathe, the things that we see, eyes to appreciate beauty, a palate that can appreciate taste, a nose that can enjoy the smells. 
thank you, God, and we start to praise him as the creator of all things, that he is the God, the one God who made everything in it. And then maybe we start to confess that our prayers have been too small. Forgive me, Lord, that I doubted that you could deal with with this difficult work situation, this relationship at home that I find so difficult. Lord, would you, the God of the whole earth, start to help me? And then we start to read again. And then the next day we come back to it. And we think about it at lunchtime and it comes back to us and the Bible becomes very, very beautiful to us. And then finally, um, a verse in Psalm 63, verse 5, and, and this is the effect. George Muller said, he said, The result I have found to be almost invariably that after a very few minutes my soul has been led to confess or to thanksgiving or to intercession or supplication, so that though I did not, as it were, give myself to prayer but to meditation, yet it turned almost immediately or more or less into prayer. And he said that the part of the point of the meditation is that we would enjoy God. He said experimentally, not that it's an experiment. The word has changed over a hundred years and we would say experientially. And wouldn't you like to know God more experientially, to enjoy the joy and the peace of his presence, to know his love, to have faith fill your heart? And I would say with George Muller, Charles Spurgeon, many godly men and women that I know, that this is a route into experiencing God. And so that final verse, my soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food. I've been doing that uh, for quite often do uh, low fat diets and you have to make it a bit extra spicy because once you take the fat out of it, it doesn't taste quite the same, does it? And my mouth will praise you with joyful lips when, when I remember you upon my bed. So even at night, meditate. When you wake up in the night, you have that choice. Do you, do you, do you grab your phone and look at the news or play a game or, or whatever? Or do we choose to begin to think about God, to recall the scriptures and to think him and our head will fall back on that pillow in a much more restful state. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. So that's just a little bit about meditation. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for all we've heard about meditation on the scriptures this morning. Father, we pray that this won't fall on deaf ears, Lord, but you yourself will remind us that you'll bring life to us. You'll give us verses that we can remember and meditate and enjoy. In Jesus' name, amen.